Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Apple campus. Uh, we have a lot of iPhone app developers in the audience and members of our press and some of the teams who have worked on some of the things that we're going to show you today. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to give you a preview of iPhone OS. And I'm Greg Joswick, and I'm Vice President of iPod and iPhone Product Marketing. And I'll be joined by Scott Forstall. And we'll give you a preview of this and share some of our future plans for the iPhone OS and what we're calling version 3.0. Before we get into our plans, however, I thought I'd spend a few minutes reminding us where we're at with the iPhone. Because the iPhone is now, as of this week, in 80 countries around the world. It's amazing because we started less than two years ago in one country. And actually, even a year ago, we were just in a handful of countries. And now we're in 80 countries around the world. And before we ever shipped our first iPhone, we set a very aggressive and public goal that we would sell 10 million iPhones in our first calendar year, calendar year 2008. And we blew that number away. Sold 13.7 million iPhones last year, calendar 2008. And if you look at our iPhone sales from the time that we started shipping in June of 2007 through the end of this last calendar year, you see that we've sold 17 million iPhones. And there's a clear inflection point of when we introduced the iPhone 3G. And you see the great acceptance we've had of this product. But the iPhone isn't the only product that runs the iPhone OS. The iPod Touch also runs the iPhone OS. And if you look at that same time period, through the end of this past calendar year, through the end of 2008, we've sold over 30 million devices, over 30 million units of iPhone and iPod Touch through the end of 2008, providing a great opportunity for our app developers. This also, of course, provided a great opportunity for app developers. And we first introduced the beta of this iPhone SDK here on this stage just one year ago. And in this one year's time, we've had over 800,000 downloads of the free iPhone SDK. Absolutely amazing. And we've had over 50,000 individuals and development companies join our paid iPhone developer program. It has gotten off to a gigantic start. And if we look at these developers, I find it very interesting that most of them, over 60% of them, had never developed for any Apple platform before. And yet they were able to quickly create some amazing apps in the App Store. And the App Store's appeal to big developers, small developers. You know, big developers, a good example of that's like Gameloft. And if I could read you this quote, Gameloft says that the iPhone OS has provided the next great development platform for Gameloft. The App Store has been simply amazing. And they already have over 20 games in the App Store They've had over 2 million paid downloads in just a few short months. That's incredible. Already over 20 games and already over 2 million apps that have been sold by Gameloft. But what's really exciting is that the App Store levels the playing field. And it makes it so the small guys can succeed as well. And an example of that is Steve Demeter. I see him in the crowd now, who is a, a, a one-man shop. And maybe rather than have me read his words, we've got a short video of Steve. I'm a long-time gamer. I always wanted to do a game. Ever since I was five, my parents had this Atari 2600 in the basement. I just I spent so long just down there trying to figure out those games. For the past 10 years, I've been working in a boring job, and I knew I wanted more than that for myself. So when I first discovered the iPhone SDK, I saw that it was a huge opportunity. I was like, wow, I can do a game on my own terms. The SDK was fantastic. It was an all-in-one end-to-end tool chain. Apple saying to you, look, we've dropped this in your hands. Just go and just have fun with it. I did the game for my D as a demo in, in 10 days. I would go to work, get home at 5 p.m., code till 5 a.m., and then go out to work at 8 a.m. And then the App Store launched in June. My buddy Patrick uh, called me up. He's like, dude, like, App Store is like open and like eighth place. And I'm like, oh my God. I've really enjoyed the kind of success that Apple has allowed me to have. 
When I got the first payments, it's wired to your account by territory. Canada came in, and then like Japan came in, and then USA came in, and it was like. I don't have the budget to, you know, be a big company and have a big marketing plan, but the App Store is a meritocracy. You can be some guy in a garage, and if you're making a game that people really enjoy and has something to offer uniquely, it'll get noticed. I'm Steve Demeter, creator of Trism. So clearly with the App Store appealing to big developers, small developers, and those in between, there's no surprise that we've had an explosion of apps. But we've had over 25,000 apps now in the App Store today. Absolutely amazing. And we certainly, certainly have had a lot of curiosity over the App Store submission process. But I'm happy to report that in our most current full month of data in February, that 96% of apps that were submitted were approved. And we're moving apps through the store faster than we ever have because 98% of those apps were approved in seven days or less. And of course, the most amazing statistic of all is from our customers, the fact that customers love the App Store. And we now have passed 800 million downloads in the App Store. And that's in eight months' time. 800 million downloads. So I have to thank you, the developers, both in the crowd and, and out there for developing these great apps and giving our customers more than 25,000 more reasons to want an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Thank you very much.